Hola! All right, here we are, back with another episode with this uh, canopy that I have here. <clears throat> um, so we've done, straightened out the aluminum, and I, um, the last episode we did fiberglass work, and so now it's all about paint prep, and I will have it painted by the end of this weekend. Uh, it's supposed to be raining for the next couple weekends, and I want to use this in about two weekends, so I'm going to be completely done with it. So, I have some good news. It started out as potentially bad news, and then it went better. So, this window right here, and this back window right here. Um, when I started calling around for glass places, um... One after another after another said, as soon as they heard me say canopy or camper shell, they said, nope, 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 we don't do them. We don't, there's nothing we can help you with. Sorry, go away. And um, <clears throat> so I was getting pretty discouraged because Lear, I called Lear um, or a Lear uh, distributor and they wanted $250 for this and they wanted $300 for this, which is actually cheaper by a fair margin than some of the ones I've seen. I've seen them as high as 500. Um, and one of the reasons why is because they sell the whole assembly. They will not just sell the glass. It's the whole assembly. So um, I eventually did find a glass place in downtown Portland um, called Apple Glass, Apple Auto Glass. And the guy was like willing to, to try. He's like, usually we don't do that, but bring it in, we'll try. So I brought it in. They ended up being extremely cool, like just very awesome. Um, so originally they still said they wouldn't do anything with the side one, but they said they would try with the back one. So I took the back one in. They were totally cool. Um, took a bit, but I got a price on it. And originally he was saying like 200 bucks, which I, scared me and I was not happy about that. But what choice do I have, right? Because I, start, I started looking at um, the plexiglass and there's that other one that's just like plexiglass like Lexon or something like that and it's just not something I want to put in here so <clears throat> what the plan was when I thought it was going to be expensive was I was going to do this one in whatever glass it was however expensive as it was because I wanted this being glass and I wanted this to be glass too but bottom line is if it was that expensive I wasn't going to put it into it so I was actually going to make some fiberglass panels and which mean I would have to do it for this side and that side make fiberglass panels that I could paint and it would just be closed off, which would have a certain purpose because then people wouldn't be able to look in there and see my stuff and it wouldn't get broken again. Um, I know there many come that way and they do look nice. Uh, they have a little bit more of a utilitarian look than like a, <clears throat> you know, just a clean, like whatever look. So I, I wanted glass, but bottom line is they took a while and eventually they did, did come through and they came through with a decent price. So if I would have got tinted, it would have been way too expensive, but I got clear um, that glass and that glass. So that one was 125 bucks, and this one was 95 I can handle that. So also what I did was I went and bought some tint so I could match it to that other window because definitely want tinted windows. We do not want people looking inside there. Um, and I had actually considered maybe tinting the other one further and just do all of them like limo tint. So we'll see how that goes as time goes on. Um, I have ordered, taken this off and ordered it, just so anyone who knows, this is just like a sticky, like a 3M double stick stuff that goes down here and that's all that holds that on. Uh, it's, it does well, it was hard to take off. but um, So we got glass, that's exciting for me. Um, we have it ordered, it'll be here next week. And so now I can just focus on painting and getting this thing ready. So. The first step in that is I'm going to take the 80 grit and I'm going to get this deep stuff out like that. Um, there's a lot of deep scratches in this and I'm going to just work them out. I've already done a couple little ones here and there um, and I'm just going to work these, these deep scratches out and then um, after I get them worked out then I can come back with a finer sandpaper and smooth it all down and then the next step will be the body filler and then the glazing putty to make sure everything is absolutely beautiful and gorgeous and ready to go. Alright, so to start out, 
I'm going to start out with some 80 grit, just like I was using on the fiberglass repair. So we have some of these deep ones that I'm going to get in there and just get flat or smoothed out. And there's a lot all over, so I'm going to have to just go at it. There's some scrapes on the other side. So 80 grit to start just on the, on the rough parts. Definitely using a respirator for this because fiberglass in the lungs is not a good thing. With 80 grit paper, it doesn't take much, so be careful you don't go too far. Um, I know that sometimes I have a tendency to get carried away on some of this stuff. So uh, you just want to try to get it smooth. And then, like I said, even if you get it remotely close, then we can do it better with the smaller, the finer uh, sandpaper. Plugging along here, um, so these right here, these freaking gouges, uh, they're so bad. I think what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to resin them, but I'm going to treat it kind of like one of the cracks. I'm going to get in there in the sandpaper and just clean all that stuff out so it's one clean groove. And then I'll come back and use my glazing putty to fill that in because it's so bad and so wide. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to just sand out the whole thing. I think it'll look bad. So that's what I'm going to try. Okay, so we got all the 80 grit done. I got all the big deep stuff squared away <clears throat> so I tried to kind of get it down and then work it out a little bit because you want it to be nice and smooth anything you fill with your finger you're going to see in the paint <clears throat> um, one thing they rec recommend in a, in a video I saw is getting a paper towel um, I was using my rubber gloves <clears throat> and I could feel pretty good too but like a paper towel when it's smooth after you get it real smooth with the fine sandpaper like a 600 grit <clears throat> Or 400 grit then you can move your finger across and you can feel anything you feel you'll be able to see in that paint so uh, I've pretty much I've only done 80 grit but I've got it down so the next step is I'm gonna get 180 grit and then I'm gonna move up to probably 400 and then eventually to 600 um, I'll probably do my <clears throat> glazing putty at 400 I think I haven't done it in quite a while I kind of forgot but I think 400 is what I did it before so I'll give that a shot and see how it works out. Obviously, before we do the glazing putty, we are going to clean the heck out of that thing. We don't want any of that dust on there. So, on to the next. Okay, I've got to sand it down to 400 grit right now, which is... Some people like 400 grit when they're going to paint. Um, they say with metallic paints, it's safer to go 600 when you're going to paint. Um, to not not show the the scratches from the sandpaper so I'm down to 400 right now I haven't done it real thorough so bottom line right now I'm at 400 so I can 
get ready. I've basically touched up all the spots um, where there was big gouges. There's a couple spots like that um, that I've just got the top layer off where it just looks real bad and then I'm going to just try to do it with the glazing putty. Um, so everything, I've hit everything and everything else I've I've gone over so that it dulls that surface um, so when it comes time to paint. But right now I'm just cleaning it up and I'm going to get ready to put uh, filler, the glazing putty on there. For the filler, for the kind of big spots I'm going to use this, which really, they're all so small, we can probably get away with just using the glazing putty. So the way this works is body filler is for like kind of the big stuff. Um, it fills in, you don't want to use it on huge stuff, but uh, in, in fact, like I said, uh, a lot of the stuff that we have is almost borderline not big enough for the filler, but I think it is. I think it's the best. Um, so what it does, this fills in the big gaps, and then you have this glazing putty, which this fills in the really fine, fine stuff. Like this will get big sandpaper marks out and, and, and uh, level. Uh, if there's really fine little details you want to perfect, this is the stuff to use. So Evercoat, I mean, you can go get Bondo. That's made by 3M. That's a good company. Um, I assume that's probably pretty good stuff. Um, but I, I just, I really have a thing about using like real high quality stuff. Um, I bought this for my Volkswagen project. Uh, Evercoat seems to be an awesome brand. I use this on the Volkswagen. Um, and I really had next to no... Uh, experience on body filler and it came out gorgeous so um, good stuff to deal with um, so obviously this kind of stuff it's uh, so you get that goopy stuff right there and basically if you're not familiar with the way body filler works you just plop some of that on a flat surface and then use a little bit of the hardener in there um, and you mix it up really really good it has to be mixed up like better than you would expect it to be mixed uh, you do not want any swirls you want it all to be one uniform color and you want it to be on the, on the, on the thing you get your spreader you want to scrape it you, you want to fold it you don't want to get air bubbles into it so you want to try to fold it over, smooth it out, fold it out. So I'll kind of try to show you how to do that. Um, so basically, first of all, we're just going to reach in here and grab some of this. I don't need very much, but I always use too much. I always get more than I need, which is probably better. I mean, better have more than you need than not enough. Notice the consistency of this Evercoat compared to like regular Bondo. This stuff, there's, it's almost hard to explain, but it's like runny, and then it gets to this point where it just kind of stays like where it's where it's supposed to be. Um, whereas the Bondo is kind of like that, but it, there's something about this just seems a little higher quality uh, in terms of the way it, it works, and the way it uh, flows, the way it acts. It's kind of hard to explain, but when you when you use it, you'll see what I'm talking about. So you take some of that. Now, you can get real precise on this, um, but you don't have to be super precise. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly how much, but... Oh, is this... I almost used the wrong stuff. Although I think it's the same stuff, it's just a different tube. So one thing you want to do... Mine sits, mine's been sitting around for about a year or so. You want to knead it around, make sure it's mixed inside there. Can't really shake it, it won't do any good, but you can kind of knead it around, it'll it'll mix it up for you. And then you're just going to go ahead and put a dab on there. It doesn't take much. So now what you're going to do is you kind of spread it, fold it, scrape it, spread it. 
like I said, I'm still very much amateur at this, so I might not be completely correct. But the key is you want to get it very mixed up. You don't want, you want to try to minimize the air bubbles in there. And you want to try to minimize, uh, yeah, basically the air bubbles. But you want to mix it up nicely so where it's one uniform color. So you kind of pick it all up with the scraper. And then you lay it back down. Smooth it out. Come back, pick it up again. Smooth it out again. You're going to get to a point where you think, ah, that's probably good enough. But whenever you think, ah, that's good enough, go at least three or four or five more times because you want it to be really well mixed in there. You can see it starting to really become one color. So you still seeing a little bit here. I don't know if you guys... Now with this stuff, so it's about the consistency of peanut butter. So you're going to want to get... Nice little section here. And it might be a kind of a messy process at first. You're just going to lay it right in there. You want to make sure that you push it in there nicely. Give it some pressure. You can kind of feel it go in that hole. Come back across. You want to try to get off as much of the excess as possible because anything that doesn't come off, once it's dried, you get to sand that off. And uh, it's it can be kind of a pain, honestly. So if you're using a good spreader, this process is pretty good. So you can see how it just kind of automatically fills in as you want it to. It's kind of nice. So, and, and don't worry about getting it perfect because sometimes you're just going to need to come in and you're going to need to do an extra coat. Um, so you might not get it the first time and that's okay. Uh, or like I said, if you're doing this like I am, and then you're going to go back across with the... Um, glazing putty then you don't even need to worry about getting it perfect because the glazing putty will fill in all the little small, small divots and stuff really like that I just did that that's a glazing putty item I shouldn't have even really used it for that the main thing I wanted to use it was that one over there and I guess kind of this one too but really it's not even really falling in that way this is a glazing putty item too honestly so I, I mixed up a bunch of this stuff and really it's pretty much better off used as the glazing putty is going to be much better. Um, but at least you can see how this kind of works if you haven't done this before. So I filled in some spots here and there. That's good. You know, that's cool. Really, like I said, the only valid use I even have for this is this right here. So I'll go back over it one more time just to make sure it's it's good. It's got. I'll come back through and clean it up. It is just like the fiberglass. It's a messy job. It, if you have, when you have, uh, when you get, okay, so now the next logical step is sand all this extra off. It's nice they make it green like that, so you can see what's on there and what's not. You can see the high spots, you can see the low spots. That'll help a lot when we do the, uh, the glazing putty and, and finalize it and make it, you know, perfect. So, uh, it's still a little tacky. Maybe I should kind of hold off, but. I think we're okay. It dries pretty quick. It's been about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So we'll see how it goes. I 
I'm using 220 here um, and also I do recommend especially on the flat surfaces to use a uh, sanding block this is kind of an expensive one like the dirt block it's like soft so it doesn't burn the edges a lot it's it's really good you don't have to have a, a, one of these you can just get like even a 2 by 4 you know a little block of wood or something to keep everything flat because otherwise it's kind of hard uh, to make sure everything's flat so you can see it's kind of clumping up on my sandpaper which means it's still a little bit wet so we'll give it a couple minutes more I switched out of that 220 that 220 I was using was kind of trash it wasn't doing very good so I'm back at the one the 180 I'm using the 180 right now that's what the filler recommends anyway oh also you'll notice I'm not using my block anymore um, I realized that there's this is not flat there's there's a little bit of a concave to this so the flat won't work um, so I'm gonna do it with my hand See, it's still clogging it up, but it seems pretty dry, I don't know. Okay, so here we go with the glazing putty. So the big thing about this, so I did do some a little bit of reading, and I remember how it's supposed to work. A four-inch puddle. This is a glazing putty. I don't know if it's different with the other stuff. There was some kind of the same style argument for the other stuff, um, as far as how much hardener to add. So this says a four-inch puddle requires one bead from one side to the other side. I think the other hardener. I think I remember right, it was like one half of whatever you're doing or something like that. So you might want to double check that when you're doing it. So the thing about this glazing putty is it fills in a lot thinner. So you can fill things that you would have a hard time filling with um, regular filler. This stuff goes on a lot thinner. It's um, a lot more precise comes out very smooth when you're done sanding it so again you want to be very particular about making sure that all that hardener is very well mixed in there so I, I kind of stole uh, another youtubers idea they use as far as the the pad that I'm on so you get something flat and then you get like a cereal box or something that's got that glossy cardboard um, because you're going to need to reset it every time um, to have a clean surface to work on so if you get like some pieces of cardboard that are kind of glossy like that then you can use it and then when you're done you throw it away get another one so this is getting pretty close I don't see any tiger stripes in it right now like I said just when you think you're done do it a few more times okay now this is going to be a bit of a learning process because when I did this I didn't do anything this um, meticulous before so we'll see how it goes There's so many little divots everywhere that we pretty much have to cover 
this whole back area. So it's just a matter of getting the putty and working it into all the holes. High five. So like I said, you want to try not to leave any more than you need because you're going to have to come back and clean that up. It's kind of difficult when you have as much stuff to deal with as I have here. In some places you kind of need to leave it a little bit high so you can sand it down. Those places we know that we sand a lot are going to require a little bit more to sand down. The other thing is I added the, scent, the amount of hardener they told me to, but I'm thinking it was too much because it's already starting to set up and I'm not even close to being done. This is honestly pretty messy. Just come back through and go back over it. And nothing's the end of the world because even if it's too much, you can go back and sand it off. It's just a matter of saving yourself a little bit of time in the long run. I think kind of towards the end I kind of realized that uh, it's not supposed to go on this gloppy like it's pretty sloppy uh, and glazing putty I kind of remember I, I started remembering more towards the end that it's really supposed to go on and then come off like like that where it's just filling in the deep stuff and there shouldn't be any like the filler is for the, the other stuff so it shouldn't go on like like that's ridiculous that's horrible I mean when it comes to this and I'm trying to do such a big area it's kind of tough so but if you can see like I mean this stuff's pretty incredible you can see the scratches from the 80 grit it like fills it right in so but the point of this the what how this stuff's supposed to work is you put it on and then you use a sharp edge and you know like the sharp edge of the the uh, spreader and really give it a lot of pressure and you're trying to get almost all of it off so it's just a clear thing and what it does is it just fills in all the little tiny imperfections see so i started like i i kind of got in a hurry because i did like three batches and they all took off quicker than i expected so i just put them on there which is going to be fine i mean it's still in there it's just going to be a lot more work uh sanding it and stuff like that so that's okay uh definitely not how professional would do it uh just a disclaimer there Baby, here we go. So, uh, yeah, this is hours later. I most definitely cost myself a lot of extra time by sloppily putting on that glazing putty. But, it came out gorgeous. It just took a lot of freaking work. So, all that, like, it was just covered completely. And I had to sand all that stuff off, so... It is smooth as a baby's bottom now. There is like no spot in here. It's hard to tell by the looking at it, but there's like no spot here that doesn't have, or that is like not completely smooth. Not one measurable scratch or, well, I say not one, but 
you know how one of these projects go. You're going to find a couple at the end of the day. After this is painted, I will find some and I will hate them and they will irk me to no end. So uh, my father-in-law was here earlier today and he was kind of teasing me because I spent hours trying to perfect this, the top of this, which one, you're never going to see the top of it. And two, I'm putting a rack on this eventually. So it's just going to cover it up anyways. But the way I look at it is I don't like doing things half ass. I want to do it really as perfect as I can, as professional as I can, considering I am not professional. And also I'm learning. Um, and I'm learning how to really dial it in and just get it really nice. So um, I want to try to show you this glazing putty, if you're not familiar with it, how detailed it gets. So look at these scratches. That was a deep scratch right there. That glazing putty is so thin, and it just the way it works, it goes into the finest little scratches. You can see those little teeny tiny, see all these little white specks everywhere? Those were all deep gouges. And that glazing putty just fills it in. And after it's painted, you will never know. Um, so this big old deep scratch over here. It's just smooth as can be. To fill it, you'd never know is over there. Actually, I kind of take it back. If I'm being very honest, which I do like to be very honest. If I feel right here somewhere. Where is it? Yeah, kind of right here. It you can feel it go down a little bit and if I it wasn't on the top and I wasn't putting a rack on it Then I would get it absolutely perfect, but as it is I don't think you'll even notice it uh, looking at it straight so uh, Basically this is this thing is good to go. It's ready. I'm gonna uh, I went over it, that whole thing I did with one piece of 180 grit sandpaper and it kind of doled out towards the end where it just like almost like dialed itself down to like a 400 grit or like a 300 grit or two 280 or whatever so it just kind of did the job perfectly um and so now i'm gonna go over it with 400 and then they say to get ready for paint i think 600 so some people say four some people say six i'm gonna play it safe and go six so i'm gonna do four now and then i'm gonna do six and then it's just gonna be preparing this shot for paint tomorrow okay it's the next morning now. I got this bad boy all set and ready to go. Um, I have cleaned it once with the paint prep. I will definitely do it again before we go um, to paint. Uh, so I got it all taped off as you can see. I don't want to let paint all over the, the nice beautiful uh, carpet inside. So I got it all taped off. All that paint tape taped off I'm gonna try to save a little bit of paint uh, I'm gonna paint along here obviously where it needs to be painted some of this does not need base coat because no one's ever gonna see it uh, and it was fine there was nothing wrong with it so I'll do I'll do base coat where it needs it and nowhere that it doesn't and then I'll do a little bit of clear coating just to make sure all those scuffs look good and then uh, psh, paint 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 so we are, uh, got Mr. Heater going here, so we can get the shop up to a good temperature. You want to paint uh, between, ideally, 70, 60, 70, above that, that uh, temperature. Some people say above 50. As, lo as long as it's above 50, you'll probably be all right. I like to be about 70, um, even 65, whatever is okay. Um, so here we go okay so just a little rundown on how we're gonna do this um i know a lot of you are probably gonna um ridicule you know tease they don't they're gonna think this is kind of funny way to do it but so these are the rags i was talking about that i used to clean up they're pretty good anyway so yes uh we're gonna rattle can it's not going to the uh walmart and picking up the closest number uh, the paint match you can find uh, AutomotiveTouchUp.com. These guys are really awesome. I've used them multiple times um, on multiple situations. They are experts at getting really, really perfect uh, paint uh, matches. So, if you're not familiar with automotive paint, it is nearly impossible to get a 100% perfect match. There's always going to be a little bit off. You have to send in your paint code for your vehicle. 
Um, and even then, you know, it's not going to be 100% um, because the way it's sprayed, all kinds of different reasons why it's not. Uh, generally, they blend it when they can, uh, the professionals do, because it's not that close. So in this situation, we don't have an option to blend it because it's just going to be from one thing to another. Um, so it, it'll be close enough that no one will ever, no one will ever worry. Um, I did do a test test and I went out and looked and just like the last time I used them it is dead on there they are fantastic they get it as close as any uh, good paint shop would so I've done this a number of times and I've done it enough to know that this way is a good way to go now if you have a big old air compressor and a paint gun that is the best way to go there's no doubt about it uh, if you want a real professional job you get the paint, you put it in an awesome paint gun, and you use your huge, awesome air compressor, and you do it that way. That is by far the best. However, I have this air compressor, and it just does not have the CFM to run a, uh, a proper sprayer. Now, that's one of the things high on my list is, is to get, because I want to do professional stuff. However, I've done this a number of times, and you can make this look Every bit is good and the quality will be every bit as, as high. Um, so this is high quality automotive paint put in this can. And um, these nozzles that they have are not like the ones that you would get from Walmart or whatever. They have like a specific type of nozzle that tries to mimic the spray pattern of a gun as closely as they can. Now, that said, it's not going to be perfect. Um, these tend to come out a little bit rougher, um, which in my experience, um, it on the base coat, it comes out beautiful. Um, you do a clear coat. By the time you're all done, you'll have a little bit more orange peeling, um, and it might be a little bit rougher, but you go back and you buff it out, and after you buff it out, you'll never know the difference, and it's every bit as high quality. Now, in the past, um, I have used their other clear coat because they didn't have this and their other clear coat was fantastic it did a great job and my jobs that i've done i've had one of them is coming up on two years and it still looks fantastic um, in our northwest rainy um, area and so i know it's high quality however um, this time they just started carrying since the last time i've ordered from them this stuff which i've seen people use this on the youtube this is the way to go if you can do it. It's high toxic. You really, you have to have a, um, a decent ventilator if you're going to do that or a respirator because this stuff's got some highly toxic stuff in it. But this is actually a two-part professional um, clear coat. And you actually take this and there's actually a thing inside of it that you have to pierce and it, and it mixes in and then you shake it up and it's a hardener so it's got it's a two-part paint that once you do that it, it, it hardens or you know you put in the hardener and then you spray it and it is even more high quality than the stuff I used before which I know is really good this stuff will probably last longer um, this is the best way to go as far as this uh, way works uh, they have really good quality primer and the prices are good the, so these paint matched are 20 bucks a can these were 20 bucks a can. The other stuff they had was like 12, 13 bucks a can, but it's worth it to go the extra mile and get the good stuff. Um, you want to have tack cloth because we're going to tack. Uh, so you want to clean with a good grease and wax remover. And then after that's dry, you go back with the tack cloth to get all the dust and particles off that you can. Then we will primer. Uh, we'll do a couple coats of primer waiting. Um, we we'll kind of let the sheen, so you spray it on. You wait for the shine to go off, you wait for it to dry, and then you can do what, however many to coats you need, and then you can go back and uh, once it's really dry, if you need to, you can sand it. Uh, some people choose to sand the primer, some people don't. I'm going to wait and see how smooth it is. If it's real smooth, then I'm not going to do it because I I did some sanding last time and it was kind of it was kind of weird. So I'm going to try not to sand it if I can help it, but if it's not really smooth, then I will do some wet sanding to make it perfect. Um, and then obviously we'll go into the base coat. Uh, I got four cans, I'm hoping that'll be enough. I believe that it will. Um, I did the whole half of a car with seven cans or six cans. So I think this will be just fine. Um, same thing with the clear. 
I think we're going to be good to go. So we'll see how it turns out. Like I said, you do it this way, it might be a little more work in the end in terms of uh, buffing it out. But I'm telling you, you saved so much money. Um, like I said, if you have an awesome air compressor, then just do it the right way. It, I mean, even a sprayer is not very expensive. And the paint um, is not you know that expensive to get that way. So just my setup. imperfections you'll see every imperfection that you can't see before it's painted so and it is looking beautiful oh my gosh it came out really good there's a couple little spots that I kind of already knew were going to be there so this is kind of stupid there's a there's a spot right there gosh, it's hard to even get to where you can see it it's right there so it was still a bit rough, but to be honest with you, I was so tired last night, I just got lazy and I said, you know what, it's going to be so small that no one will ever notice it but me, and it'll bother me, but I was so tired last night, uh, it took so much longer than I expected doing that sloppy job with the glazing putty, so <sighs> little things like that, other than that, I mean, oh my gosh, turned out perfect, so... Uh, I was talking about sanding or not sanding or blah blah blah. You can see the stripes in there. And some of it did kind of get a little bit rough. So I'm not going to paint it with it like that. So I'm going to wait for it to dry all the way. They say after 30 minutes it is wet sandable. So uh, I got about 10 or 15 more minutes left. And I am going to wet sand it with 600 grit. And then I will wash off. Uh, the dust with water, let it dry thoroughly, and we'll be on to our base coat. Okay, so I just did uh, the sanding, the wet sanding. Yeah, definitely it needed it. It would have looked pretty horrible if I hadn't done the wet sanding. So you can take it by case-by-case -case basis. You can see if it's smooth enough for you. It was not for me, not at all. It was kind of a pain in the ass. It took me about 45 minutes or an hour, but I got it super smooth now, so I'm going to be see you can probably see like the top there is kind of tiger striped a little bit which I'm not worried about I concentrated mainly on the sides because I don't want I didn't I didn't want to waste all my paint I wanted to make sure I had plenty on the sides. so if I had a little bit more I guess I could have made that a little more perfect so I'm curious to see after we put a uh, clear coat on if it's gonna look like that still if it does I'm not too worried about it I don't care We are done painting. Wow, so that was awesome. Uh, that clear. It uh, it seemed at first it seemed like you go really fast, and it did go pretty quick, but it had really good coverage. Uh, the first coat, I was it was looking pretty orange peely, but man, it is looking absolutely gorgeous. I got this last time around. 
I don't know if it's because I was trying to go a little thick because I really wanted it to come out as smooth as possible or if because I didn't let it dry too much between coats. I tried to dry like uh, at least 10 minutes between coats uh, so, it, so you don't get that running. I did get a couple runs which uh, I got one last time around and it smoothed itself completely out so I might not need to deal with them if I do then so be it. Those are easy to uh, get some you know fine sandpaper and sand out but let's see if you can get some it's hard to see in the light and of course it's always going to look different in the sun so you never really know until you get outside but it's a little orange peely on the top and you can see where I didn't get uh, perfect coverage from the base coat on the top which I'm okay with because no one will ever see it. And I know it's well protected because I got a lot of clear coat on there. Uh, and as far as the orange peel goes, that's one of the things, you know, using the, the stuff. I was able to get it pretty damn nice, but if it's a little orange peely, that's fine. You just go and you do a little buffing and it is, I mean, nicer than a factory finish. So I don't know if you can see it as good as I can, but oh my gosh. It looks absolutely gorgeous. I can't imagine it turning out better in a auto shop or at the dealer. So I'm pretty stoked.